You guys don't be so loud. What's that? Don't be so loud. You're being too loud. I, know. <laughs> I don't know who's no, more nervous right now. <laughs> Well, good evening, everybody, and uh, welcome to our weekly edition of the Rumble Mumble, as we now count down to the 22nd annual Rumble in Fort Wayne, presented by Jason Deach Trailer Sales. Uh, it's going to be Friday and Saturday, December 27th and 28th. Uh, before we get into our program tonight, we wish uh, to extend our sympathies and condolences to the Mike Stryker family. As you know, Mike lost his life yesterday and uh, just uh, was a staple in the midget industry and uh, through the years very uh, active up at uh, Fort Wayne in the Rumble. So his uh, absence will be felt and uh, we uh, sure are going to miss you, Mike. Uh, I'm Larry Bowes and joining me tonight again uh, from Grit Motorsports Marketing, Kyle Digger. Yeah. Kyle, can you believe that seven weeks away, or actually this is edition number seven. That's Yeah, so, yeah this is our seventh week, and also, like you said, seven weeks away. Um, we'll be inside the Coliseum watching uh, midgets, 600s, and uh, go-karts and quarter midgets driving around. Um, so, yeah, it's it's kind of crazy. I can't believe it's going this fast um, and definitely building up some If these seven weeks go – these upcoming seven weeks go as uh, fast as these past seven have, I'm in trouble. Uh, a lot to do, but I'm uh, really looking forward to it as we'll have two full nights of racing on the one six mile, specially built concrete oval inside the War Memorial Coliseum on Parnell Avenue, the Allen County War Memorial Coliseum, uh, the Expo Center attached to it. And uh, over the past few weeks, we've had uh, of course, uh, Tony Barhorse, the founder of the Rumble in Fort Wayne. We had Tony Stewart, Mike Fedorsik, Dylan Wooding, Randy Burrow, and they all talked about the excitement of racing at the Rumble. Well, tonight we're going at the other end of the age spectrum. Uh, one of our younger competitors running in the go-kart division, we're in Zanesville, downtown Zanesville, actually Yoder, Indiana tonight. And uh, with us, Jacob J.B. Boxall. Jacob, welcome. Thank you. For letting me on the show. <laughs> uh, I I don't know. I, I just think it's really cool. You know, we uh, like you said, uh, the whole age spectrum. We go from uh, probably one of our oldest competitors, Mike Fedorchuk, down to uh, JB Boxel here. Um, so it's how old are you, Jake? Thirteen. Thirteen years old, yeah. and Mike is uh, what do you say, going on sixty-five or sixty-two? Oh, sixty. Yeah. 60, yeah. 60. <laughs> <laughs> so you multiply. You're about five times younger than him and uh, racing at the Rumble. I'm pretty, pretty impressed with that math skills there, Larry. <laughs> what, uh, what are you going to be racing this year? In the Rumble? Yeah. I'll be racing the Junior 3 flat court class. In the flat court class, okay. Uh, inside the speeds, you guys, especially the kids, are going probably just as fast as the midgets. Does that scare you at all or put any fear in you? No. <laughs> you just don't think about it? No, I just go on the track and race my race and don't worry about how fast I'm going. And you've got the other kids out there. Uh, you're pretty lucky. I think the, the kids that you race against are a lot of them that you run against all summer long. And so you, you know a little bit about them. Yeah. Uh, any uh, particular setup that you have that makes it different from outdoors you know you race a lot on the dirt and now you're going to the concrete how uh, much the same or different is it we have to change a lot of stuff in cross and toe and then you have to change the whole rear end from axle from thick to thin and then a bunch of tires setups and and a lot of left side weight right yes. <laughs> now wait a minute when you say we does that mean we, including the driver, or is that the pit crew that does all the work? Mostly the pit crew. Okay. <laughs> and where are you at that time? Either in the pits, watching, or running around with friends. There you go. You do a lot of that, don't you? 
I, I think I see you a lot every year up in uh, the, what is it now, turn one or turn four, turn three simulators up there. I think you see you doing a lot of that every year. Well, that's practicing your skills, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, JB is what your friends call you, Jacob. Uh, I call you a little squirt. But uh, <laughs> tell us about your racing career, how you got started and all that kind of stuff. Well, when I was four, my dad, after he got done racing go-karts, they bought a kid cart, and then we was racing at the beer field. A little pavement track. That was like in the infield, I believe. Yeah, the yeah. infield of the big track. Mm -hmm. And we was racing that. And then 2011, I believe, we went to Little Lee and won my first. That was my first dirt race, and I ended up winning my first race there. And then after that, we moved up to the rookie flathead class. And we just kept going from that. And then ended up winning a championship in the junior one at Little Lee. Now, in, in recent years, uh, you've, you've started running 600s and junior sprints, and now you're up to the full 600 class? Yeah, we're in the outlaw, non-wing class, and A class. How's, how's that been going? It's been going good at the beginning of the season this year. We just got our own car, and then we were having some motor issues, but then we found that out, and then we had – we were running good, and then we just got to get more power, and then we're working on that, and then we got running good. Okay, when you say junior three flat cart, uh, we have a lot of uh, the, the unique thing about the rumble is we have the midgets, the winged 600s, the non winged 600s. We have the quarter midgets, uh, I think six classes of quarter midgets and seven classes of go karts. Well, you say a flat cart, so right behind us here, that is what you refer to when you say the flat cart that's without the cage. Yeah. So you're running that seat is about three quarters of an inch off the ground. And you're going down the straightaways about 48 miles an hour <laughs> with no seatbelts. Yep. Pretty brave. Tell me, uh, at school, do you and your friends talk about racing at all? Do they even know what you do? Do they even care? Or, or... Yeah, I have some friends that race uh, dirt bikes and some that do race go-karts as well. And they understand, but then me and my friends that race dirt bikes we always make fun of each other because... Their, their heat races are called motos, and we just call ours heat races. So you get to go to school uh, on Monday and talk about what you did over the weekend. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, and and if you have a bad day, who do you blame it on? Dad. Oh, is it Dad? <laughs> <laughs> well, luckily Dad's on the other side of the camera, and he can't defend himself. So you're all on your own, big boy, tonight. Uh, for those of you that have just joined us, we're here with uh, Jacob J.B. Basso. We're in Yoder, Indiana, talking about the Rumble Mumble, and uh, that's coming up uh, December 27 and 28. Uh, it's in Fort Wayne, Indiana, uh, two big days, a Friday and a Saturday. Yeah, and uh, next week, November 11th, our uh, ticket sales go on uh, go live, uh, so make sure if you have a seat uh, that you want uh, reserved, go pick those out. Um, and we still have our uh, races rates for our hotels going. Uh, the Ramada, the Hyatt Place, and the uh, Holiday Inn right across the street. Right, and I understand uh, they are going pretty quickly, so if you want complete information on the hotels and where to stay, uh, go to our website, www.rumbleinfortwayne.com. All the information is on there, and uh, there are deadlines, so uh, to get that racer's rate, you need to get your uh, reservation in prior to the deadline coming up. And uh, so the big boys, they go partying at uh, the Rumble. What do you guys do? Do you guys all stay at their mod and head down to the pool? No, when we get done racing, we'll hang out with Matt Westfall on the pit side over there with the midgets. And once we're done with that, we'll head home, and then the next day we'll wake up and head back to the track. Oh, so you come uh, you come back home. You don't stay there. Wise decision. <laughs> so you mentioned Matt Westfall, and you have a Matt Westfall T-shirt on. Is that one of your heroes? Yeah, he's been building my go-kart chassis since I moved up to a full-size go-kart. And what's that chassis called? Apache chassis. Apache chassis. And uh, Matt's a big boy, and uh, he uh, we were just doing the uh, feature win history out at Little E, and Matt's won quite a few features out there. And uh, he uh, is he tough to learn from? Is he pretty tough with you? Yeah. He is. <laughs> what's your uh, what's your favorite racetrack? In a go kart or like anywhere? 
Let's uh, let's go first with the go karts. It has to be state line or little league. Okay, state line's a wide open deal, and uh, little league takes a lot of finesse because you run in the daytime. Is that similar to running on the concrete? Kind of before it gets all that rubber. Because what? There's like one line, and if you get out of that line, you're in trouble. Mm -hmm. Okay. How do you prepare for, um, or I guess do you prepare any differently for an indoor race as compared to like, you know, going to Little League or State Line? I'd watch a couple of Facebook videos and get prepared to see what, if the track's going to be like this or the track's going to be like that and different compare. And then once we get there, we'll look at the track and see what it's going to do and hope it does what we think. Uh, do you ever use the GoPro and go from some of the footage of that, or you just do the videos that are online? Uh, this year we've been, I've hooked up a GoPro on my micro, and we got some clips from that. We, we got that running all good, and we got some good clips from that, and then I learned from that. Because I know one of our common friends, Stephen Berlin, he has a, a GoPro, and the night before the race, he literally will stay up to like three o'clock in the morning just studying. And I said, you know, what can you learn from that? He said, they have a position like where he said, just the slightest hand movement can be a tick off uh, a second on the clock. So that's how critical it is. So let's go back to favorite tracks outdoors. I, I've been seeing you and your dad come into the races since before you were probably in a kid cart. And I know that uh, when you're not on a go-kart, you guys are at a racetrack. And uh, which one do you think you enjoy going to the most? When we're not racing? Yeah. I probably enjoy either going to Kokomo or the Big E. Awesome. Good deal. You got the, got the nice little hat plug in there. That was smart. <laughs> uh, it doesn't get you a free pit pass. Oh, Sorry. <laughs> so what's been... Uh, Oh, uh, let's let's go the good side of the spectrum. What's been your favorite moment at the Rumble? Um, probably starting in the back from making it in the B main and making my way all the way up to fifth or third, I think. Oh, really? That's a lot. And you've only got oh boy, what is it like? Fifteen laps, I think, is a feature up there. So that doesn't give you much time. No. <laughs> And let's go to the other end. What was your worst experience up there? Probably in the heat rays, getting shoved into a tire. Yeah, a lot of damage. Mm -hmm. Those tires are brutal, <laughs> yeah. let me tell you. <laughs> yeah, Kyle's been known to hit a few uh, tires up there as well. Uh, so uh, we can imagine the damage you have up there. We have about nine more minutes uh, to go in our show tonight. And I was really proud of myself last week. I learned how to shut the phone off at 22 minutes, but I forgot to set it at the start. So we went like 28 minutes. But talking to Mike Fedorsik, we probably could have gone another 56 minutes. And actually, we're only what, like three miles away from Mike Fedorsik's shop right now? Yeah. So uh, we're in uh, Yoder, Indiana. Uh, we're in the garage, and we can see in the background. I don't know if the camera picks it up, but we've got the 600 that you'll be going into next year and uh there's some talk that uh lily where you run your go-karts uh possibly will be widening enlarging not so much the go-kart track but taking the existing track making it bigger on the outside to run possibly the 600s uh do you think that would uh, excite you a little bit yeah i think it'll be awesome because since i've been racing there since my go-kart and then moving it up into a micro i think that'd be awesome okay all right Kyle, you got any words of wisdom for him uh, moving up to a 600? Just keep it on all fours. That uh, that seems to work pretty well. Um, and yeah, if you do that, you'll be doing better than me. <laughs> so you've uh, you moved up uh, quite a bit. Uh, you said from the kid cart to the flat carts. You run the cage carts, and now the 600. Who uh, who do you have to give special thanks to? I have to give special thanks to Matt for building all the chassis, Dad. Michael Rose for helping with us all the tires, and especially RJ Sailor for helping us get the car rolling with the motor, and a bunch of other people that's been helping us all along the way. I know he's watching, so I'm going to have to ask you this, and uh, you'll have to be politically correct, but uh, what's it like working with Michael Rose? Is that an experience or what? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good answer. Michael, uh, we hope that you enjoyed that one. Uh, 
Jacob, did you proud there? Okay. That was a very politically correct answer there. <laughs> so, uh, coming up uh, just seven weeks from now, are you ready? Yeah. Okay, who, who do you consider to be your biggest competition up there? Probably Little Larry, if he's in my class. Yeah, he's about due to move up to the adult class, I think. Little Larry King C. Jr. He's been, uh, he's moved up outdoors running a uh, 305 sprint car. And uh, that's a neat thing, uh, guys. You know, everybody talks about the go-karts, you know. Oh, man, they're running go-karts. So let, let's go. You guys steal the show. And uh, Tony Stewart said that. Uh, Mike Fedorsic related to it. He said they, that where they're, where they're pitted, they can really watch. And they are really excited about what the go-karts do. And it's so neat to see so many people from the go-kart division move up into uh, other classes. Tony, in fact, uh, started out in go-karts. And look where he is today, uh, Sarah Fisher. The Kyle uh, Dagger the, kid started in go-karts, too. I hear he's doing pretty good. Who's that? Kyle Dagger. Yeah, uh, uh, I'll have to Google that name and see if I can see any of his uh, win statistics. There's, there's a lot of results. Maybe not a lot of wins. But, but yeah. You know, not only the go-karts, uh, let's take a look at the quarter midgets. Yeah. Zeb Wise, Zeb Wy yeah. just, uh, just uh, up the road in Angola, yeah, just started out in quarter racing. midgets, and now he, we want to get him on a show, but uh, he, he's just so busy, he, he, he can't find time. He's down in Charlotte tonight, getting yeah. ready to go out to California. Uh -huh. uh, we, uh, we're we looking, uh, Rumble Mumble, uh, we'll put in a shameless plug, we're looking for a sponsor to send Rumble Mumble out to California for the turkey race so that we can interview Rico. How cool would that be? I think that'd be awesome. I've seen you up over there talking to Rico and stuff. He's just, uh, the people love him, don't they? Yeah. He uh, He's a cool guy. Uh, so you, you talked about, you know, working with Westfall and, yeah. and going to, you know, obviously at the Rumble, there's Tony Stewart, Cody Swanson, Rico, you know, what, what's it like racing in front of those guys? I think it's a blast because, like, if, you're doing really good. You're going to get your name out to them, and then they're going to start telling people, and then your name is just out there. Then. Is there any added pressure? Yeah. A little bit. <laughs> yeah. Do you think about that when you get out there? No, and I think when I just get out there, I just hope to have a good time out there and have fun. You know, guys, these kids are so much fun to work with. And uh, have I ever hit you over the head with the flag? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, that seems to be my claim to fame, I guess. But. Uh, you guys have so much fun, and the parents just take it so serious. They're sitting there arguing amongst themselves, and then we look, there's the kids. They're playing football together. I mean, kids that maybe just stuffed you in the wall 10 minutes later, you're playing football or, or running around, and uh, that, that's the cool thing about the, the racing. Tell me, uh, uh, Fort Wayne, the way the pits work, you're way down in the basement. You don't get to see the track, and then you, the hall where you sage is behind the track so you don't see the track until you get on it and uh what what goes through your mind then then you're just hoping the track is how you looked at it about 20 minutes ago or you have someone up there looking at it taking photos for you and bring it back to the to the uh, basement like you were saying and then if it's how it, if it changed you have to change your setup and you're just hoping it stayed the same wow <laughs> a lot of work a lot of thinking for a young mind like that. Where do you go to school? Norwell Middle School. Okay, and uh, honor roll student? Close. Close? Oh, okay. All right, good deal. Well, Kyle, uh, we we're talking about the rumble coming up. We talked about the tickets. Again, uh, Ticketmaster and uh, Kyle's box office, but don't fret. Uh, just like any track, you can buy them on race day. So uh, you don't need to buy them in advance. But if you have that special seat, I would encourage you to do that because uh, everybody we've talked to is excited about the Rumble coming up. And uh, it's is that kind of like on your calendar as a I have to do good race? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we're wrapping it up here. About three more minutes to go. Uh, anybody want to give a shout out out to any any? Did you tell your friends you're going to be on uh, Facebook tonight? I did. I know that uh, RJ Cornett uh, he texted in that uh, he's going to be watching you tonight, and I'm sure that uh, Kevin Williamson and that whole gang uh, they'll be watching you tonight. And so, you want to give a shout out to any of the kids at school or anything? No, because I don't know if they're on or not. But... Oh, okay. Well, they can always tune in all yeah. week long. 
I, I will say you do have quite the following. Um, you know, there's there's quite a few people watching right now. Um, and and it, for a go kart racer, you're doing pretty good. I think you might even be beating Mike Fedorchak. Oh boy, how's that feel? Good. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mike had what almost over two thousand views with his show last week, and uh, it, it you know Kyle, what's so neat about the Rumble Mumble? We're seven weeks into it. And it was kind of a whim that we were talking about. I think we were, I don't even know where we were. We, we said, let's do a show. And then we did the contest to come up with the name. And Kurt uh, Brockman came up with the winning name through a vote. And uh, we didn't know how it was going to go. And uh, it is overwhelming now. Drivers are calling and asking to be on the show. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're our uh, first youngster. Uh, you're a celebrity. <laughs> How's that make you feel? Pretty great. Great. Uh, any sponsors uh, that helps you out at all? Simpson for all the safety equipment. Um, Davco for sponsoring us for a set of tires. Oh, neat. And dad. And, yeah, dad. <laughs> definitely dad. The, uh, Michael Rose again for helping us again with tires and tires. Everybody, everybody that we've talked to. Uh, talks about the tires. Is that the biggest component in the go kart racing now? The tires? Yeah, I definitely think so. If you go out there with brand new tires, you're going to do better than if you have a week or year old tires. Yet uh, at Little E, I was talking. Well, Eric Wogeman uh, finished second in the uh, 400 clones, and uh, he commented that he ran the same. He did on uh, two sets of tires all year long and one set was three years old so uh you know it, it's tire management maybe as much as it is tire and that dreaded tire prep and everything else so uh running in front of that many people and uh, we were really blessed last year we had a darn good crowd really good crowd when you come out and we start doing with the go-karts the four breast wave gap and the fans, they get into it, and uh, they're standing up and cheering. Do you see that? Do you feel that? I definitely feel the cheering when you're just on the track and you're going around, and then you got everyone waving, and you're waving back up there. It's just a, definitely a great moment at the time. Well, there's the sound. Now need... let's see if I can remember how to do it. I think this year when we do the four-wide salute, we need to add some, some fireworks or some pyrotechnics, I think. Uh... Well, we'll talk to Randy Brown at the Coliseum and our fire fun. marshal. Just surprise him, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> last year, I got to carry the flag around. That's right. And I, that was the best thing I've ever done at the Rumble. The American flag for the national anthem. And I just imagine that shot, the flag in the background, and a big flame shooting up. That's a picture-perfect moment, Larry. we got to do it. Uh, we'll discuss it. Okay. Well, this uh, wraps up uh, this week. Jacob, you did a great job, and uh, a little bit hesitant in bringing somebody young on, but I'm telling you what, folks, he's uh, years ahead of his age, and very. Uh, he was so nervous about this, and you would have never guessed it when he did the show. Uh, very calm, very collected, and uh, number 44, we'll be looking forward to uh, seeing you at the Rumble in Fort Wayne, uh, December 27th to 28th. Kyle, take us home. Yep, December 27th, 28th. Uh, we'll see you there in the Junior 3. Um, stay tuned next week, Thursday, 7.22 p.m. for the next edition of the Rumble Mumble. And see who we bring in. We never know, usually till the day before. <laughs>